All right, so what we're going to do here is go through an example of how to do a Spearman correlation when you have to rank order your data. Uh, so if you have ordinal data, you'd want to use a Spearman correlation for that. Uh, otherwise, you can rank data, and when you put the data in ranks and do the correlation, that is a Spearman correlation. So this isn't actually that hard to do. So here what we have are the weights of some individuals and the income brackets into which they fall. So obviously weight can be tra treated as continuous, but the income is a bracket. Uh, so this is an ordinal piece of data. We would not want to presume it to be continuous. Now we could try to do something like simply get a Spearman correlation so we could use the Corel function with this original data. So our first array is A2 to A31, that's the weight data. And our second array is B2 to B31, that's the income data. And we can correlate those and we get this Pearson value of 0.29 rounding to the second. So that would be the traditional Pearson correlation. Now Spearman isn't that hard to do in comparison. Uh, we just have to rank the data first. So to get the Spearman value, we'll still use that Corel function, but first we have to create weight and income ranks and correlate those ranks. So there is a rank function, rank.avg, right, the average rank. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to tell it we want to rank A2, that's the uh, row we're in, and we want to rank it relative to all the values located in A2 through A31, and we're going to rank those in descending order, okay? So once we've done this, using the dollar signs, we're going to be able to autofill this very easily for all of our variables. So we get a returned weight rank. We can now double click to fill these all through. So now we have all the ranks established, right? Uh, so you can find like the first ranked weight is the highest weight that existed, right? Because we did it in descending order. So there you go. Um, then what we can do is we can just copy this across because what will happen is all of these now change to the B column references from A. So now this is ranking the income, right? So what you'll find is, you know, you have a bunch of ties more so in this case because these are ordinal data. So now we can simply do a correlation function for these two pieces of information that we've ranked. So if we do correlate and now we do C2 to C31 and then we do D2 to D31, we're going to get the correlation function that is for Spearman. So here we see it returns a slightly lower value, 0.28. So notice it's it's still capturing that same relationship, but it's doing it more appropriately in the context of having data that is ordinal. You can also use Spearman in cases where you have extreme outlier values. It's not as influenced as Pearson because uh, Pearson is using those deviations from the mean, so a very large deviation could produce a, a very large effect in Pearson. But Spearman is using all ranks, so even if your value was really absurdly high, you would simply get the highest rank. Uh, there's nothing more you could do, so it's just getting the order of them. So those are some times you might want to use Spearman, and that is how you could calculate it.